to another audiobook I read Matilda by Roald Dahl. This really took me back to my childhood. I was a big Roald Dahl stan back in the day when I learned to read finally or when my mum and dad would read to me. Uh, George's Marvelous Medicine and the Twits were my favourite so I need to get around to those but yeah Malcolm X to Matilda. I I have no explanations. <laughs> what is there to say about Matilda, honestly? It was wholesome. It was really well written, actually. The structure of the book is really quite solid. The language and the descriptions and the visualization is really quite... It's a solid children's book. It's a classic. And I don't know what else to say about it. So I'm just going to move on to my next book. And that's a self-help book because I was going all sorts of things that I don't usually do. I was just firing off on all cylinders and all types and all genres. And I read The Subtle Art not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson and I've had a bit of time to dwell on this one and think about it so here are my current thoughts. <laughs> so essentially this book is a self-help book that talks about mindset and how not to give a fuck or how to give a fuck in the correct places, where to distribute your energy, how to feel better, more motivated in your life, that kind of vibe. <laughs> and as I mentioned in my vlog it did remind me a little bit of therapy with a therapist because I've had therapy with a therapist that was very similar to that vibe talking about mindset and where you view yourself, how you think of yourself, how to think more positively and to move on. Why am I talking about this? And I really enjoyed it. It was one of those reads, listens, whatever you want to say. It was uncomfortable in points because obviously a lot of the subjects hit quite close to home, but also it was invigorating at the same time. There was a lot of things that I was like, yeah, no, I, I got that. It was new perspectives, new ideas or thoughts to dwell on and or to motivate and uplift. I do feel like the author slash narrator, I'm not sure if the narrator helped or swayed this in any way but I'm assuming the author's voice put this across. He was an interesting author. I agreed with a lot of the points he put forth, a lot of the mindset points. However, I don't know, there was this air of arrogance about him that I wasn't too mad at. I was fine with it because I, I agreed and I liked a lot of the things he was discussing. However, he's definitely slightly patronising. I don't know if that's just because it's one of those things where naturally our subconscious tries to attack what it doesn't want to believe, what it doesn't want to think, so we need to confront those things. But also, the author definitely comes from a place of not really understanding true pain. I don't want to say that dramatically, but you can tell that he's an entitled average man, fully able, never had serious mental health issues or disabilities, he's not LGBT, he's white, he's male, he's got a lot of privilege. Financially, he's pretty tight, his career went well. I mean, this man is as privileged as privilege gets, right? And you can definitely tell when he talks about his life and his past that he's got a level of privilege, which I think he's aware of, but it's one of those things where if you listen to this book or if you read this book, the voice does talk down to you a little bit. He can never truly understand the perspective of someone who's gone through worse than he. So take the book with a grain of salt. That's kind of what I did. I listened to the book, I took out of it the bits I wanted to take, I thought about it and I dwelled and I tried to let the lesson and the ideas marinate in my brain and try to use it as a positive influence in my life but with the full understanding that he's not the be on end or he's not the messiah he's not do you, do you see what i mean am i making any sense at all what i'm trying to say is he had good points i liked a lot of the themes and the discussions in the book but the author is not an own voice author he's not going to be the inspiration so just be aware of that honestly a lot of the themes he talked about i've forgotten now because it's been so long i honestly could have a reread of that book because I enjoyed a lot of the points and I can't remember so many of them now. It's almost like after I finished reading that book I wanted to write an essay. That sounds stupid, like I haven't been in academia for years. But there was something about the topics I wanted to delve into. I guess it's back to the, me thinking I'm back in therapy doing worksheets and homework for my mental health. There's something proactive in that that I enjoy and I like discussing and delving deep. I'm a thinker. I love philosophy and all of those mind, mind exercises and ideas and deep philosophical thoughts. I eat that crap for breakfast. I love delving deep and playing. It's like my playground and in a more positive light 
than the bad mental health issues I go through. It makes me feel like I'm doing the same thing, having the same deep intense thoughts, but in a more positive, proactive way than I usually do. I also liked a lot of the history. He used a lot of historical figures or myths or legends to back his points and to support his points and his ideas and views, which I found quite fun. I learned a few things. There was this guy from Japan who was hidden during the war. There was talks about these band members who grew to be who we know they are now and their history. And I really liked those case studies almost, I'd call them, of like real people who've had different experiences and going through their thought process and their mental health, how they did it right or how they did it wrong or how our own subconscious works. Basically, this book summed up loads of psychology, loads of philosophy, and if you love thinking, if you love being probed and going to new directions with your thoughts, thinking about meanings of life and where you fit and trying to improve your mental state, I think it's a fun book, but just do beware of the fact that it could possibly be triggering and that it is written by an entitled author. So take that what you will. I really enjoyed it either way. And like I said, I kind of want to give it a re-listen, so that says something about it. The next book I read for The Reading Rush was Reflection by Elizabeth Lim. This is one of the Twisted Tales books and follows Mulan. It is so like the Mulan movie. So the beginning of this book is basically the Mulan movie, the Disney film. It's one of my faves and it is that movie on page in book form. And there is nothing more beautiful than an amazing movie but written, books are better! <laughs> and then it takes a turn as, you know, the Twisted Tale and it just goes in another direction to the movie but it still has all that same heart, the same themes, the same ideas, the same adventure, similar characters although not the same ones, a couple are the same but really fun. It's a really inventive take, it goes buck wild, it's a fun child friendly happy romp that has adventure and romance and real internal thoughts. It's like a deep dive, Mulan has to really figure out who she is to make her way out of this. It's just good. Good. This book had all the ingredients and baked it well and Elizabeth Lim is becoming like an author that I'm really respecting because I read Spin the Dawn which was a Mulan retelling as well although completely different. The fact she's written two is quite funny to me. It had that Disney vibe, the themes of honour and everything that's good about Mulan was in this book but it took a completely new take and a new story and if that don't convince you to read it I don't really know what will. It was just fun. The underworld, the setting, it was so magical and dark and mysterious. Anything go, but the magic system and the rules were grounded and everything made sense. Everything kind of came full circle. It was just well constructed, written, and it was fun. And that's just why I loved Reflection. It's not some classical piece of literature masterpiece, but it doesn't have to be. Reading's about having fun and enjoying it and having a good story and having great themes and topics of discussion and having an adventure. And if you want all of that, it's in here and then some. And I love Mulan and I love Reflection. Although my favourite songs from the movie are definitely I'll Make a Man Out of You and The Girl Worth Fighting For because just the peak of Disney music. Next up, my last audiobook that I listened to was Milk and Honey by, I think it's pronounced Rupi Kapar, but I'm probably wrong and if I am, I'm very sorry. Milk and Honey is a poetry collection with themes of feminism and mental health, abuse. A lot is packed into that book and it was one I knew was going to be a heavy book, but also very flowery, beautiful, intense. It's got very mixed reviews because obviously it could be quite triggering. There's a lot of abuse, themes of abuse in that book. Definitely go into that book only if you feel able to. Personally with me having depression I didn't feel like the book was too intense for me. I feel like my issues and her issues were very different and I listened to it while I was sitting outside putting the washing out. It was almost quite relaxing. I don't know if that's because it was read really beautifully. I don't know if it would be different reading it on paper. I'm guessing the experiences of listening and reading it would be quite different. Did I like the poems? I'm still not sure. I think some of them I really liked. You know when you hear that line and you go ooh, you feel that. It hits you somewhere in your soul. There were those moments and then there were moments where I was like, okay. And I think that's the thing with poetry, it's very out on a limb. And not all of the poems are gonna land and I think that's okay. I really like that this book tackled a subject like this. It tackled abuse and feminism, it tackled mental health. I really think these are important topics to discuss and to be beautified but not romanticised. I like that key difference. At least I can definitely see that difference. Does anyone else think it was romanticised? I definitely don't think it was. It 
it's definitely abuse is bad but here's a way to say it in a pretty way i like that because with mental health i keep talking about mental health today and i don't want to trust me but when you go through a lot but think of a pretty way to say it it's easier it wasn't dramatic because you can't over dramatize that kind of thing so yeah some of the poems i found really beautiful some of them less so again i think i need to read it physically to give a better description i'm not sure all of the poems really like they wash over me rather than sunk in i don't know maybe there's something about listening to the audiobook while you're outside and just chillaxing that didn't quite absorb does anyone know what I'm saying? Do I know what I'm saying? No, probably not. I'd like to read it again physically and see if the words seeped more into my brain. I kind of don't feel in the right place to review this book or to say whether I enjoyed this book or whether the poems were good because I think there's something real in reading them properly. I don't know, that's my experience with that book. It was nice to listen to, it was very relaxing and it let my, my brain think about things but be very direct and listen to someone else's story and have them tell it in the way they want to. In the metaphors and the flowery descriptors that they choose and I know there's something powerful in that and whether you like the poems or not that's that person's experience and you can't really trash it especially when it's a subject so serious so I realize I'm not reviewing these books very well I'm just kind of giving you my thoughts and because my brain is a jumbled heap of crap mess right now I'm probably not doing a very good job but hopefully I'm giving you vibes these are my honest raw thoughts so hopefully you get something good out of them all right guys we're almost in the end I've got two books left so the last book I read for the reading rush was Forget Me Not by Ellie Terry. This was a reread, I have read it before. It is a story written in verse, yeah, more poetry, but this time in a narrative format. And it is about a little girl who has Tourette's and her mum is forever moving them from place to place. Every time she gets a new boyfriend, she breaks up with her boyfriend and they move. And so our young main character has never been able to set roots. She's never been able to make friends and keep them with her Tourette's and with moving all the time, it's just become an impossible task. And it's about her in the new place she's in and can she finally make a friend and shake the bullies and the stairs and it talks about and explains from someone's perspective what Tourette's is and I love it for that and its perspective on Tourette's. Tourette's is a subject very close to my heart, a very close loved one I know suffers from Tourette's, very close <laughs> and the subject means a lot to me. I don't think it's talked about, I don't think it's known as much as it should be in media. How many characters in TV shows and movies can you name who have Tourette's? I'll keep waiting, there's just not many and it's a condition that's just so misunderstood. Even now, I still hear all the crap comments that people think about Tourette's. The old, oh, I, I swear, like I've got Tourette's, and I'm like, shut up. <laughs> you don't know what you took. No, why doesn't the world know what this is yet? How have we not had that discussion? And I love books like this because they put this discussion forward and they explain an experience, and this feels accurate to me. Very accurate. It's an own voices story. You can tell, or at least I, I can tell. It's so realistic and genuine and beautiful. The poems are really sweet. The whole narrative flows perfectly. I always find stories written in verse that have one whole narrative can be disjointed or it doesn't always flow. This one flows so beautifully. The poems can be quite different and yet they all just fit together so beautifully. I don't really know how the story that's told is so sweet and genuine and wholesome and I recommend this book if you want to read more poetry if you want to learn about Tourette's and what it's like from the perspective of someone if you want a book that's cute and wholesome and sweet bittersweet it's sad it's happy it's real it's great for kids because it is from the perspective of someone younger it doesn't talk down to you it's so real with you so on level it explains things so beautifully and so simply honestly this book needs to be more known so that people can see a perspective they've never seen and read a darn cute cute wholesome book at the same time with poetry. It's probably completely left field to what a lot of people would normally read but I highly recommend it. It's so quick to read which is one of the reasons I picked it up for the end of the reading rush. I loved it the first time and I've loved it the second time. It's one of those books I can go back to and it's just as good as the last time I read it so I highly highly recommend Forget Me Not. The last book on this list, the 11th book I read in July. This kicked off my book for the Join the Six Readathon, which I had a blast with, and that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I read exactly what I said I was going to read for the Join the Six Readathon, go watch my TBR. I read the exact three books I said I was going to read, which was great. This book was the whole theme of the readathon. I love The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo so much when I read it last year, and I've been waiting 
thing to get to this one. My dad read it before me. I was behind. I really loved it. I don't think it be Evelyn Hugo but then again I wasn't expecting it to that would have taken some doing but you can definitely tell this is written by Taylor Jenkins Reid there are so many similarities in the theme and the style of writing even though they were so totally different stories they had these similar threads for instance they feel autobiographical they feel like they are historical that they're written about real public famous figures which they are not they are completely fictional but they feel like real people Evelyn all the members of this band felt like real people it feels like a documentary both of them have an almost documentary style first one you have a journalist and this one it's like interviews so both of them have very similar threads they're set in the past a few decades ago about the rise and fall fame scandals there is similarities but this one is about a band and although i didn't enjoy it as much as Evelyn hugo i still had so much fun reading it i loved all the snippets how every band member had a different take on what was going on and see as you go how everyone was reacting to like the same events how certain people knew certain things and others didn't i knew that going in but i wasn't sure how that was going to come together i thought it was really seamless i thought it worked really really well it read smoothly and the story did not suffer the narrative was i didn't know you could write a book like this the way they have these little snippets of dialogue from these interviews i didn't know you could write a book in this format in this fashion taylor jenkins really really has a knack for trying out things like this do not doubt out of the ballpark. I really loved a lot of the characters, they felt so realistic, especially in this one because there's so many different types of characters in this band, surrounding the band, a lot of them felt so real. I felt quite connected to it again with the the rock, I love rock. My parents grew up in these kind of eras so it was fun. I loved the sprayed edges, that's off topic. It wasn't heartbreaking but I did go through the feels and the emotion, I was rooting for certain characters, didn't like others, didn't always agree with every character, there was a lot of struggles, there was a lot of problems with addiction which I thought was really well handled and well written. It feels realistic, it doesn't romanticise, it's just what it was and I liked that about it. Let me just show you one of the pages so you can see. Can you see that? I don't know if you can tell. You get these snippets so you get the name of who's speaking and then their little piece of dialogue and the story is linear. They start off with the creation of the band when they're kids and just go right through all the phases of the band's career. It really took me there. Just like Taylor Jenkins reads other book, a book I love does it really took me to the 70s it took me to LA and these concerts these parties these hotel rooms that a lot of the characters I found super interesting again Taylor Jenkins Reid did that thing where at the end she kind of reveals the meta bombshell I'm gonna call it because that seems to be her trademark I really really enjoyed this book and I'm so glad that I read it especially for the readathon so maybe it took me a lot more long time to get to but it was meant to be it came at the right time yes that is them all I hope I did these books justice. I read so many that I wanted to get through them in a timely manner but I didn't want to rush them. Also a lot of these books it felt like I read them a million years ago now because I read 11 that's so many. Mockingjay and The Gathering of Shadows it felt like I read that years ago. <laughs> I just hope that I did some of these books justice and even though my brain is mush I'm still glad that I filmed this. I don't know if I'll edit it and get it out on time but at least I got my thoughts on the camera so that when I filmed this at the end of August beginning of September I didn't forget literally everything I read. Now I'm going to go on a little break as I mentioned in my second vlog. I just need a break for mental health reasons. I need a break. I need to stop. I need time. But before I go I wanted to tell you about a few books I got. Mini haul! So my boyfriend said I could go and buy some books and I went to the works because that is an unappreciated gem and I found the Mallory Blackman's Noughts and Crosses series in the works. All four books for £8. I checked online. You couldn't get it cheaper. Thank you to my boyfriend for getting me these because I have no money. I haven't bought books in a millennia. I was so happy to have some new books. Also, Black Voices and books about race. Yay! And lastly, the Join the Six Readathon. So I finished the Join the Six Readathon. It was amazing and I loved it. It was such a great readathon. And I found out like a couple of days ago that I won a giveaway. What? I've never won a giveaway or a raffle or a lottery or anything like that in my life. Literally, I sat and thought for ages. I've never won anything like that. So I won a book. <laughs> I'm so happy. Especially, like I said, I haven't had a job in 2020, which has been hard and horrible and I'm not going to go into it right now, but to get a giveaway book and to be able to order a book 
it <laughs> came at the right time it really it got me so emotional and thank you to all of the hosts of the join the six reunathon not for coming up with this amazing creative idea and running it but also thanks for the luck and the giveaway and for being so generous and lenient and kaz for messaging me just being so cool oh i'm so happy about that like comment down below whatever i'm going on a break for a bit but i will still reply to comments i just won't be posting videos my camera's literally about to die so i will see you in the future